Welcome back guys. In this question, a ball is thrown upward from a roof of a 32 meter tall building. The ball reaches its max height of 50 meters after three seconds. Two parts of this question. Part A, we have to determine an equation of the height of the ball as a function of time. And then part B, we have to state the domain and range of the function. So to find the equation in part A, let's first start off with a diagram see what's happening so we're throwing a ball off a building and then at three seconds so let's say over here it's reaching a max height of 50. and then the ball is going to hit the ground so this here is height and this here is time Right, and it's being thrown off a 32 meter tall building, so we know that this here is 32. So notice that we could get coordinates here. This coordinate is 3 and 50, right? That's the maximum. And this coordinate here is 0 and 32. Right, and we're dealing with a parabola here. Now, notice that we don't keep drawing the parabola because time can't be negative. So we would be ignoring this part of the parabola. So we're only dealing with this here. So you want to remember that when we do part B, when we're finding the domain and range. But anyway, um, let's find this equation. So notice that we're given the vertex of this parabola. So we know that this parabola It's going to be in this format right we put it in vertex form we don't know what that a value is we don't know how much is being stretched but we know that the vertex is 3 and 50 so we could input that right there now how can we solve for this a value well we would have to plug in some kind of value some kind of point on this parabola and notice we're given this point here 0 and 32 so actually this shouldn't be a y, this could be an h here. So we could plug in a height of 32. A we're solving for, then we plug in zero for t. And this would be plus 50. So this would be 32 equals zero minus three is negative three, negative three squared is nine. So nine times a, that is nine a plus 50, right? So remember you keep these two separate because we're multiplying here. So we're multiplying by the A and then the 50 we are adding. A lot of times what students will do is they'll uh, square this bracket, it'll be nine and then they'll add the 50, but you can't do that. The nine has to be multiplied by the A because we have to do bed mass. So now we just simply solve for A. We could bring the 50 over, 32 minus 50 gives us negative 18, which is equal to 9A. So that means A, if we divide both sides by nine, is equal to negative two. So part A, this function is H is what? Negative two t minus 3 squared plus 50. That there is the answer to part A. That's the equation of the height of the ball as a function of time. So once you have the vertex, if they give you the vertex, you just want to plug it into vertex form, solve for that A value with another point on the graph. And because they threw it off a 32 meter tall building, we know that that y-intercept is 32. So the point is zero and 32 that we could plug in and solve for that a value. Okay, so now let's move on to part B. Let's find what the domain and range is. Well, notice that the range of the function we could actually find already because we know that the height which is the dependent variable in this case, AKA the Y value, it goes from zero to 50. 
that is the range, right? So that's what the y value or the height is in between always. So basically, h is an element of real numbers, but h has to be between 0 and 50, inclusive of those, because it could be 0 once it lands here, and it could be 50 at 3 seconds once it uh, reaches that max height. So that there is the range. Now, what about the domain? Well, the domain is based on the dependent variable. In this case, it's time. However, notice that we have to do a little bit more work for this one. So time is an element of real numbers. What's the time going to be in between? Well, it's going to go from 0 when the ball is thrown off the roof to when the ball hits the ground. But notice that we don't know what that time is right there when it hits the ground. But we do know that it's going to start at 0. But we have to solve for when the ball is going to hit the ground. And we can do that with the equation that we just found. So we know if we write out the equation, h is negative 2 bracket t minus 3 squared plus 50. How can we solve for when the ball is going to hit the ground? Well, we could plug in 0 for h. And now we can solve for t. Now, there's multiple ways to solve for t. You can expand this. So you could FOIL this out, t minus 3 times t minus 3 then distribute the negative in, and then um, simplify all the like terms. Then you could factor it, or you could throw it into the quadratic formula. In this case, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Because it's already in vertex form, we could sort of algebraically solve for this. We could sort of manipulate it. So we could bring the 50 over. So we'd have negative 50 equals negative 2 t minus 3 squared. We could divide both sides by negative 2. So we'd have 25 equals t minus 3 squared. And then you want to get rid of this exponent here, the square. So what we can do is we could square root both sides. So square root of 25, we'd have positive 5 equals t minus 3. And then the square root of 25 can also be negative 5 equals t minus 3. You got to do both cases. So here, if we isolate for t, bring the negative 3 over, 5 plus 3 gives us 8. And then over here, if we bring the negative 3 over, negative 5 plus 3 gives us negative 2. So we got two t values when that height is 0. And this negative 2, it's basically happening. Again, if we were to draw out this parabola fully, that's happening here. Okay, but because time can't be negative, we can just ignore this solution. But nevertheless, you do want to take both cases and you want to make sure you see what that t value is. Because sometimes that t value, even though the square root is negative, that t value can be positive. So let's say this was like t minus 8. Bring the 8 over, negative 5 plus 8 would give us positive 3. Right, so you don't just want to discount it because it's negative here. You want to actually solve for that t value. And then when the t value is negative, we know time can't be negative. So we could ignore that part of the graph and just focus on that first quadrant there. So this is the value that we care about. So basically, the ball is hitting the ground at 8 seconds. So we know the domain, the time is between 0 and 8. That's how you solve for that domain. Notice in this case, too, that it's a nice number. It's a nice whole number, 8. But sometimes you'll get decimals here as well. So this square root here might not be smooth. So let's say we're taking like the square root of 41. Then it would be 6 point something. So we'd have 6 point something here. And we'd have negative 6 point that number there. And then solving for t, we would have a decimal number. In this case, it's nice. We have a whole number, but that doesn't always have to happen. And again, another way that you could solve for t 
is you could expand everything and then throw it in the quadratic formula. You could actually try that yourself. You should get these two t values if you uh, expand it correctly and simplify correctly. But nevertheless, this is another way to solve for t if the uh, quadratic is given in vertex form. Right? So that's the range, that's the domain, that is the equation.